Bates, Canadian with Helicopter Line Ground School. Another weekend drinking coffee video. This started two weeks ago, and now I've been doing them every day since because it's been uh, it's been pretty cool. So this one is for a member. And the last two weeks, I've done a couple of videos about taking off and landing and off airports and FAA complaints. So I want to give you his exact question because if he took the time to email me, I'm sure that many of you have the same question. And this is something that you got to know whether you're just getting into this or you're, you know, commercially rated pilot doing a 135 check ride. Every examiner asks this question. And I'm just going to tell you what his question is here. And then we're going to hit the far aim real quick and tell you exactly what it says so you understand it better. He said, Kenny, this kind of goes hand in hand with where can we land question that you made a video about. Thank you, but it didn't address many of my questions. If we're expected to maintain a 500 foot AG altitude, where can this be broken for takeoff and landing without evoking the wrath of local federal municipalities, governments, FAA, etc.? For a good example, you mentioned wanting to land on your property, but you still have to fly over many other properties at less than 500 feet, which would seem to have issues, problems that add that us add on to fixed wing pilots and or helis at airports don't need to think about. Okay, so great, great question. So since I didn't hit it and make people completely understand, first, it's not about the big bad FAA, right? The, I'm telling you, if you're doing things by the book and you're being as safe as you can, it's almost always going to go okay with the FAA, right? If somebody complains. So here's the deal. This is 91 119. Luckily, I had good instructors when I started out many years ago because they made me tab this in the far aim and said, hey, you got to tab this one because the examiner's going to ask, you know. So I've done the same with my students over the years. A student has never went to a check ride that I've sent that didn't have this tabbed in his far aim, okay. So this is 91-119, minimum safe altitudes, general, except when necessary for takeoff and landing. So there's the first part, right? There's an exception for takeoff and landing. This is general for everyone. No person may operate an aircraft below the following altitudes. So they have anywhere, so this is for everybody, an altitude allowing if a power unit fails, an emergency landing without undue hazards to persons or property on the surface. So for anyone, anywhere, you have to be looking at the performance of your aircraft, glide distance, you know, what's below you. You're always taking in consideration of if the engine quits, can I get to the ground safely? Okay, so airplane, helicopter, doesn't matter. This is for everybody. Then there's two more parts, and then a third part for helicopters that's really important. So you have, in, the next is over congested areas, that's B, and then other than congested areas, or over other than congested areas. Okay, and I'm not going to read those to you. Those are B and C, but these are talking about 1,000 feet above, 500 feet, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is what's important. Helicopters, okay? There's always, almost always an exception in the helicopters or exceptions for helicopters in the regs, okay? Anytime you're looking something up, you got to look at the far aim and does it say aircraft? Does it say airplane? Does it say helicopter? So in this, this is helicopter. A helicopter may be operated at less than the minimums prescribed in B and C, Okay, so you can go lower than what they're listing on what's um, there for a lot of the fixed wing stuff. A helicopter may be operated at less than the minimums prescribed. In B and C of this section, provided each person operating the helicopter complies with any routes or altitudes specifically prescribed, can't talk, for helicopters by the FAA. And then there's something added there for powered parachutes. So, bottom line. You can operate the helicopter anywhere as long as you're being safe. Okay, you're checking the area, whether it's an airport, you know, as pilot in command, you have to know everything about that airport. If you're going to go land somewhere off airport, same deal. you got to research it, make sure you understand everything going on. You've checked on local ordinances, so on and so forth. Other than that, you know, can you go fly over an open field where there's nothing, not even any crops, and fly 50 feet above the ground? Sure you could. If you're not um, in a restricted or prohibited area, if you're over an open area, there's no danger to anything below you. I'm going to give you an example. 
one place I worked, we got to fly boat races. One, the coolest thing I've ever done in a helicopter. So we're out over boats or over the uh, great big lake, right? And we're chasing boats all over the place, flying fast. Now we're being careful of not to fly over fly persons or property, but we're over the, over the water. We did this all the time and companies do it all over the world, right? So we're doing this. The company sells that I was working for sells to a, uh, a guy, a new owner takes over. He's a, he was a cool guy, but he'd been working on his private airplane for like 30 years. Still wasn't rated. Didn't know the helicopter regs. And shortly after he takes over the company, one day he comes out to me on the ramp. He's like, hey, there's this guy calling down here, you know, and you guys fly up and down the, the lake shore. And he's really mad. And he's a commercial airline pilot. And he's, he's really mad. And he called the FAA. And I'm like, calm down. You know, this guy calls the FAA all the time. And I said, we all, all of us, everybody operating helicopters in this area, we're, we all travel along the lake shore through there. We're not overflying people on the beach. You know, we're not overflying air, you know, boats or we're not doing anything dangerous. We're doing this safely. And he's like, you know, he didn't. And once I kind of schooled him on it, he's like, okay. And I go, this guy calls all the time. You understand? So once we kind of explained to him how it works, after that was no problem, right? I mean, everybody did it. None of us was breaking any regs. We knew what we could do. So it always boils back to understanding where you're going, checking on, uh, you know, ordinances and things like that. But as far as taking off and landing, sure, on a helicopter, sometimes like in his question, well, what about flying over people's homes? Well, you know, I'm going to do a video here soon. I'm going to come in and actually use my backyard and we'll do some filming, put some cameras up inside and outside. But okay, when I come in, I'm going to come over a channel. I'm not going to overfly somebody's house. When I take off, you know, and if that's if the wind's out of the normally where it is out of the southwest, then when I take off, I'm going to go that way. I might overfly a few houses, but I'm not going to fly 10 feet over their house. You know, I'm still going to use my best course when I'm leaving to where, what street could I go to? What open field could I go to? So, you know, I've always kind of told students in a way, the reg almost, you could look at it kind of like the FA gives you a lot of leeway to hang yourself because they're allowing you to operate the helicopter fair, pretty low. If you have an engine failure, something happens and you hit a wire, you hit a pole, you hit somebody's house, they're going to say you were too low. So they give an exception for helicopters and they allow us to fly pretty low. It's still your duty to understand what the regulation says and to do everything the best, you know, safest possible way. So I hope that clears up a question. And that was from Mark. So thank you, Mark, for for asking that. Because again, in the last two weeks, we've done two. I've done two short videos on off airport landings and people complaining to the FAA. And I want to say one more time: the FAA is, is always going to be reasonable if you if you're doing everything by the book and you're checking your performance for the day and you've checked the area where you're going to be landing and you're using the best possible scenario to get in and out. Then if you think something is a little hinky, don't do it. You know, even in one, like flying helicopter EMS. Many, many times you would fly to a scene. Firemen on the ground or law enforcement have set up a landing area. A lot of times they set up what they think is a really good landing site. As pilot in command, you show up and you circle two or three times and you're looking at the area. It was very common that we would say, you know, because there's always communication with the people on the ground or else you, you couldn't land. That was a 135 reg. So you check it out. It was common that we would say, you know, communicate with the people on the ground, say, hey, uh, we see your spot, but we see a problem with a tower or we see a problem with a wire. There's a parking lot just about a quarter mile down the road. We'd love to, we want to meet you down there. Can you just, you know, move the ambulance down there? We'll land and meet you there. So it oils back, always boils back to you as pilot in command, doing what's safe. The 500 feet thing, that is a general rule. We say for a helicopter during the day, a general safe rule is 500 feet. For a helicopter at night, a general safe rule is a thousand feet. Okay. That's general safe rule. There isn't a rule that says a helicopter has to stay 500 feet above the ground. And again, there's an exception for takeoff and landing in there too. So Mark, I hope that answers the question a little bit better. Um, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell when you do subscribe. So you can get notifications. We're doing these daily videos. People are emailing every day. They're enjoying it. We do them quick, hit a lot of things people want to know about clarify, 
clarify things like this. So like this one, I guarantee, guarantee you're going to get asked on any check ride and you need to know it to be a safe and prudent pilot. So mark it in your far aim manual, no 91119 on your, if you're using an iPad or you're using your smartphone, understand this reg because every single check ride you ever take in your life, the examiner is going to ask. So, Hey, private pilot membership. It's only $49 a month. We want to add helicopter land ground school. We've had amazing success in seven years. It's crazy. And our private pilot's only $49 a month. You can keep it as long as you like. You can cancel any time. We have a, a video out there that explains exactly how you unsubscribe. We can do it for you. You can do it yourself. So we encourage you, if you're interested in the private pilot, you should jump in there. And we also have a commercial certified flight instructor instrument rating. We have monthly, yearly, and then we have this big professional pilot package. On the monthly and the yearly, I want to let you know you have a 24-hour trial. So when you go to log in, you have to enter your credit card information. But guess what? You have 24 hours to check out the entire site. You can remove your credit card. If you're a normal credit card customer before the 24 hours, you'll be billed nothing. If you're a PayPal customer, you got to go into PayPal and discontinue the subscription. But you have 24 hours on any of the private or yearly, uh, I'm sorry, monthly or yearly private commercial CFI instrument. Anybody has 24 hours to go in and check out the training. Unlike many other online membership sites or some other ground schools we've seen out there, you get a portion. Oh, hey, you can have sample video number one for, you know, one day. Not for us. You can go in and sample the whole entire course, 24 hours. If it's not right for you, you part as we part as friends, you're welcome back anytime. So, hope this answered some questions for some people under uh, asking about the taking off and landing and what can I do and, you know, is the FAA going to come after me? Always do what the regulations say. Always do as much research as possible. Always use the best course of action in and out when you're landing somewhere. Fly neighborly, you know, just use common sense. A lot of being a helicopter pilot or an air fixed wing pilot, whatever, a lot of the things really is common sense. Of course, we have to know the regs, but don't forget the common sense part of it. So give us a like and a share. Put your comments down below. I want to hear your takeoff and landing stories, good and bad, things you've experienced, things you've seen. Make sure you put those comments below. So thanks for tuning in, and we shall see you in the next video.